This is my new robot running on the track of the Danish Robocop competition. In this video I will tell a little about what the robot is doing on the track, but first a short introduction to the competition and to the robot. The DQU Robocop is an annual competition held at the Technical University of Denmark. It is an open competition so anyone with a robot can join. Roughly six months before the event, the new track and the rules are made public. The competition consists of several obstacles and points are awarded for solving each of them. This year the map of the track looked like this. The numbers on the drawing is referring to a document describing the different obstacles, what you are allowed to do and how many points you get for solving it. The robot must be able to do this by itself, so after it is started it is not allowed to be controlled by its creators. In real life the track looks like this, with the start at the bottom and the goal at the top. If you want to know more about the competition, you can check out the link provided in the description of this video. My robot for the competition is called Wild Willy. It consists of three wheels that can spin to drive forward and rotate around the vertical axis to turn. It is based on the swerve drive I showed in my previous video. To follow the line, the robot has a camera mounted in the tower in the front. In this video I wanted to show the robot's run in the competition rather than going into too many technical details about it. I have had a lot of questions about how the wheels are controlled and I will make another video about its design and the control. So let's get to it and see it in action. I have put the video from the onboard camera in the corner. You can see a red line at the bottom and it shows where the robot detected the line. The robot starts by following the line to the first yellow gate. This gate is timed and it will close if the robot moves too slowly. The robot gets one point each time it passes through a gate, so this was the first point for Wild Willy. After the gate there is a branch on the line and I choose to go right, which is a somewhat simpler route. As the robot approaches the curved line, you can see how the wheels, especially the backmost one, are rotating to follow the curve. Then it goes off the ramp, still following the line. It got an extra point for passing a gate, and then continues to go right at the branches to drive down the ramp. A little before it reaches the wooden floor, the robot slows down. This is because I want to detect the transition to the wood precisely. Also, I use a different algorithm for detecting the line on the wood, which is why it's now shown yellow in the onboard camera video. The robot has encoders on all wheels and when it detected the wooden floor, it started measuring the driven distance so that it can turn just before it reaches the goal. Now it will go towards the obstacle known as the tunnel. There are two gates that are blocked by closed doors, so it needs to open them to pass. The swerve modules of the robot are very useful in this situation because the robot can turn the wheels and go sideways. It is a bit hard to see what it is doing in the tunnel, so I just put a video from a try run on top. To ensure that the robot is aligned with the tunnel, it drives into the wall to straighten up. I would have preferred to use the camera for this, but it is within the rules to touch the obstacles, so this is an easy way of doing it. After passing the tunnel, extra points are awarded if the doors are closed again, so the robot will continue doing some navigation around the tunnel to do that. Maybe you notice that the back wheel is rotating a bit slower than the two in the front. This is because I burned a motor just before the competition and I had to replace it with one with a different gear ratio just to be able to run. This is one of the reasons the robot didn't go for other obstacles than the tunnel. I was simply afraid that I would burn more motors and I did not have any spare ones left. If I had used more time on the track, the robot would be able to get 9 points more by going for other obstacles like the axe, the racing track and the seesaw. To get even more points, it would need to have some sort of an arm or a gripper to pick up items. This is something I will consider for next year. So after the tunnel, the robot goes directly for the goal for a total of 9 points. This was my robot's short run in the DTU Robocop 2023. As mentioned earlier, I will create a follow-up video about the design and the control of the robot. 
For now, I just wanted to show a little of what it's capable of doing. If you would like to learn more about the competition and see some of the other robots, there's a link to the video of the final in the description. Also, if you think your own robot could do better and you would like to spend some days showing it in Copenhagen next spring, then visit the competition's website for further details.